Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go for the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF and then we'll finish up with the GFS ensembles and the UK Met Office five day uh, precipitation and temperature charts. Really unsettled at the moment with a lot of heavy rain around but it will be turning drier and potentially very very mild um, towards this weekend and next week as we are pulling up potentially some record-breaking uh, record warmth into Europe with temperatures into the mid-teens for some. And in parts of France and general Central Europe, we could be seeing in a few places get towards 20 degrees, truly exceptional for the end of December and start of January, and we'll see how that does play out. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in description. So we do have a look at the live radar at the moment. You can see heavy rain is pushing into the south. We've seen bands of rain moving in over the last 24 hours. And we've got another batch of really quite heavy rain pushing into southern counties at the moment. We've got a lot of thicker cloud and drizzle um, around for many other areas further northwards. across the Midlands, northern England, Scotland. And that will just continue. There will be some brightness at times over the next few days. But it's still looking a pretty gloomy picture with, as I said, a lot of heavy rain still around. You can see these low pressure systems just sitting over Europe, spiralling in rain and weather fronts. So if we do have a look at the GFS, you can see the general outlook, low pressure just dominating the central Atlantic. Now we still have blocking around, and that blocking is going to remain over the next few weeks. So that's why I've said over the last few videos that all hopes are not lost in terms of seeing colder weather in the next few weeks. Things can flip very quickly. Um, definitely doesn't look a very mild this weekend into next week. But beyond that, we do have a lot, and I mean a lot of uncertainty coming in as blocking patterns do look likely to return. So if you do run through the latest GFS, you can see generally a lot of west to southwesterly winds. As we head towards this weekend, you can see high pressure building in by Thursday evening. And we're starting to see that warmth really build up from the south with those temperatures peaking around Friday into Saturday. You can see potentially 15 degrees at 850 HPA getting into parts of Spain and France and with the fern effect, which is where um, air goes over mountains and, uh, and as it falls, it compresses, warms up. We could be seeing temperatures in France potentially getting up into the low 20s, that is very possible. And if we do have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see there is the potential for seeing some very warm conditions potentially on that Saturday. We're seeing temperatures locally maybe getting into the 20s, but widely in the mid teens. Now that mild air mass does eventually sweep through, but we stay with this high pressure over Europe, so it's gonna bring in more milder sectors of air over into next week. Before we just generally go very unsettled through the Atlantic. You can see where winter really is. It's towards Scandinavia and parts of Russia, northeastern Europe. That's where winter really is biting. You can see it's not a massive pest from the west pattern. We have a lot of amplification in the jet stream, still with it, a bit of up and down and some blocking over northern Canada, but nothing massively, um, massive blocking in place to sort of distort the jet stream. Beyond that, we do see sort of oscillating high and lows right towards the end of the run now, because this is in the unreliable time frame, of course, into the first week of January. And you can generally see things are just, yeah, generally westerly. However, right towards the end of the run, we do start to build a Scandinavian high. And this could turn things much, much colder for the middle of January. So, as I said, there are still blocking patterns in the longer term. You can see basically cold easterly winds are poised to be coming in on this latest GFS. And this is a theme we've just got to keep an eye on over the next few weeks. Nothing major cold is looking on the horizon, but the potential is still there with blocking patterns continuing. We still look like the um, tropospheric polar vortex is not going to really be gathering strength anytime soon. So it does look like there will be a lot of application and a lot of potential over the next few weeks, even though it looks pretty dire for um, cold weather at the moment. Now, if we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. Again, generally very similar over the next five days or so with low pressure in the Atlantic, high pressure towards Europe, and we're pulling up those really quite warm southwesterly winds, real big warmth across Europe. And again, if we have a look at the two meter temperatures, um, overnight it's still pretty chilly, of course, but in the daytime, wow, we could be getting up into the 20s across parts of France and Spain, and for the UK, mid-teens potentially. 
yeah, truly, truly exceptional. And you can see the temperature deviation really quite mild. The opposite of what I think many people watching this would want to be seeing. They want to be seeing these, the purples instead of these bright reds and, and pinks um, in terms of bitterly cold conditions instead. However, that milder air does actually sweep through after a day or two. And we generally just stay westerly. And right towards day 10, we're sort of poised. We have low pressure to our north, high pressure to our south, and, yeah, real flat jet stream. Very unlikely to continue like this. We're either going to be seeing this high pressure trying to ridge further northwards or this low pressure sink further south. It's very unlikely to stay flat and westerly like this with a little bit of high pressure building towards the Arctic. If we have a look at the Northern Hemisphere view, you can see there is a lot of high pressure blobs in the Arctic, so it's likely this jet stream is likely to go very amplified after this. So we'll have to see how that does play out throughout the first couple of weeks of January. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare to the other models. Again, generally, southwesterly winds, very, very, very mild to end December and start January. You can see the temperature deviation, really quite warm. That warm sector of air does sweep through pretty quickly in a couple of days, and we generally stay westerly. Right towards day 10, again, similar to the GM, where it's poised with a flat jet stream, could be going very amplified with this high pressure heading further northwards or the low pressure plunging further southwards. So we'll have to see how that does play out, of course, in the longer term. Again, as we had the big model wobble leading up to Christmas, in terms of that cold weather, I wouldn't look at any of these charts too literally beyond five or seven days. So up until sort of early next week, it's looking pretty um, ironed out that we're going to be seeing milder conditions. But beyond that, into the new year, it's very uncertain at this stage. Could be some cold weather. No massive signals at this stage, but as I said, things can just come into the model output very, very quickly. Now, if we do have a look at the... GFS Ensemble, which you can see very mild over the next five to seven days. Temperatures are pretty mild at the moment, but a lot of unsettled conditions, but that's going to sort of peter out over the next few days, turning a bit drier, but still there will be showers and cloud around. So the upper air temperatures are a good five to ten degrees above average from around the 29th, 30th of December all the way to around the 2nd of January. Very mild, but right in the longer term, from around 2nd, 3rd of January, all the way to the end of the line at the 8th of January. We're seeing temperatures around maybe a touch above average. And those have trended colder over the last couple of days, but not massively. You can see there are some very cold outliers, but some milder outliers, of course, as well. And you can see the operational run is a bit of a milder outlier, um, at least initially, before returning to around average. So we have to see how it does play out in the longer term. No massive signal for low pressure, no massive signal for high pressure, just a lot of uncertainty and a typical sort of average pattern from the ensemble members. We'll have to see how it does play out throughout the first weeks of January, but I do suspect there will be opportunities for cold weather over the next sort of two, three, four weeks. Um, and we've just got to see how it does play out. But at this stage, it is looking very, very mild. And if we do have a look at the broad two meter temperatures, you can see low teens, maybe mid teens at times for temperatures dip down throughout the first 10 days of January. So yeah, very, very mild. So if we do have a look at the G, uh, the, sorry, the UK Met Office run, have a look at the precipitation and temperature. You can see the rain heading up from the south today, um, initial weather fronts moving through, and then you can see the secondary um, area of rain pushing through as well. It looks like it's a bit further westwards on the live radar as we saw at the beginning of the video than this uh, UK Metos run showing. So it could come further inland and further northwards potentially. And then we just see more rain spread through early hours of tomorrow morning, eventually clearing by lunchtime, leaving a lot of, uh, sort of scattered showers and thicker cloud around. And then generally things turn drier. Cloud still plenty, but some sunshine breaking out in places. And by Wednesday, more heavy rain pushing through from a southwesterly wind with weather fronts and then generally things stay pretty unsettled bands of rain but at times we'll see some dry conditions could see heavy rain at times and then towards friday and saturday you can see those weather fronts shift further northwards impacting more parts of ireland scotland and northern england with higher pressure building in to the south and that's that euro high building bringing that much mild conditions, uh, mild conditions it'll be very interesting to see what it does show for the uh two meter temperatures now so you can see today not particularly mild around eight nine ten degrees in the south chilly up further northwards tomorrow will be similar in terms of in the north pretty chilly in the south still quite mild generally but nothing too massively mild you can see by the afternoon maybe nine or ten degrees nothing ma major and of course in the north still quite chilly 
by Wednesday, still quite cold overnight, potentially across North Scotland, really quite bitterly cold, getting into uh, low uh, single digits, uh, sorry, minus single digits, sorry, getting down to maybe minus five, maybe minus seven, showing there across some of the hills. And then through Wednesday afternoon, you can see the mild sector really does push up, 13, 14 degrees possible, further north, it's still quite chilly. By Thursday, all areas are in that much milder air. Even the high ground of Scotland is seven, eight degrees. So it will do real, it won't be real, it will really be quite bad for the snow patches and the ski slopes up in Scotland. I know they've suffered quite a lot of the pandemic over the last couple of years. It doesn't look like it's going to be great news with this mild southwesterly wind. It should be temporary, only a few days, but it is going to do a lot of melting and it's not going to be good for the Alps or Pyrenees, this milder conditions, as well as we could be seeing temperatures as high as 5 or 10 degrees in the daytime across um, areas a couple thousand meters uh, in elevation which is highly highly unusual for this time of year contributing to quite a bit of snow melt really and then by friday afternoon still quite mild 11 or 12 degrees and by saturday early hours still looking 12 13 degrees and if it's possible we could be seeing 14 or 15 degrees at times and of course towards europe the potential is there seeing maybe 20 degrees truly exceptional for the end of december but as i said this did sort of spring upon the models pretty quickly um, once the models had sort of um, moved away from that colder pattern for Christmas they very quickly latched onto this milder spell so it's only really been in the model output for the last maybe five days or so so we'll have to see how it does play out of course uh, and as I said colder runs can appear I always want to be optimistic um, colder runs can appear very very quickly within the ensemble members and we'll just have to see how this milder weather plays out over the next few days um, for now any colder conditions we're looking probably 5th of January onwards so a good 10 days now until there's any possibility of anything remotely cold um, but I'm confident we'll see something colder in January or February with the sort of long-term climate drivers as I've kept saying with blocking still appearing over the North Pole in the longer term I definitely do think we will have opportunities once again for snow whether it's going to be massive um, week-long cold spell or whether it's just going to be opportunities marshall snow events or even just snow once again returning to the north i definitely do think it's going to be returning in some capacity over the next few weeks so make sure you stay tuned to videos the weather warnings of course um and i'll see you again for another video soon